Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham Presents The Current with me, your host, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. David and I have been talking about this project for a while. I love interviewing funny people, and he loves writing about them. We'll be bringing you podcasts featuring the best in Austin comedy in all its shapes and formats. I'll be doing these interviews in two parts, the past and the current. Consider these bite-sized ways for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. And now, the current with our guest, Michael Good. Hey, Michael. Hey, good to be back. <laughs> yeah, thanks for... Uh... For coming back. Yeah. Two trips. Two <laughs> yeah. trips out here. To, <laughs> That's to right. BK. <laughs> <laughs> well, let us kick off the current episode with this question. How would you describe your life today? My life today? Uh, man, um, I get it's pretty much centered around comedy, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of the central the way I organize my life. You know, I mean, I work, but I just work so I can afford to do comedy. keep living while I do jokes at night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> For those in the listening audience that might not know your style, how would you describe your comedy style? Um, oh, it's always, it's always a weird question <laughs> to answer. I always, it's always weird when you read like a comics bio on like a festival or something and yeah. they've like described their own style. Cause it always, I was like, Oh, it's, you'd rather have like someone that's seen it describe it, you know, like, right. A, um, yeah, it is. It's weird, but I, I don't know. It's um, you know, I try to be cle- maybe smarter, maybe clever. You know, I don't. There's some, uh, you know, I don't really talk about uh, there's no fart jokes. I mean, it doesn't. Yeah. But it's not. I mean, I don't like look down. It just doesn't interest. Yeah. Me, and not that it couldn't be funny, but uh, yeah, kind of smarter. I would, you know, like uh, people like John Mulaney and Michael Che. I really liked their stuff. Um. You're Especially making... Michael Che. I feel like I would, I feel like I'm trying to be Michael Che. Yeah. <laughs> but kind of a similar style. Kind of like, yeah, I don't know. Did yeah. you happen to see him when we, we, when he came through town? Uh, he's at North Door, ago? right? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know he was here until I think I saw like a, like a do 512 email and it was like sold out yeah. by that point already. Um, no, I would have, yeah, I would have loved to, to have yeah. gone. Yeah. He would be, he's, yeah, I think he's one of the funniest stand ups. Uh, so I guess what I remember, cause I saw you open, or host the the show that Mikey Winfield came through town mm-hmm. for, and I, I guess what I would say is your humor is observational. Like you're making these observations about scenarios, and then you're 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 drawing your comedy mm-hmm. from that. Yeah, yeah, it's probably pretty accurate. Cause I don't, I don't really do like act outs or anything, and it's not like one liners. Like my jokes mm-hmm. are like kind of shorter. Um, I'm starting to get more where it's stuff. It'll be because you know it used to be all just like. Uh, something I saw or something I read or I heard this guy say something, but now it'll be more too. It's like, like, uh, stuff. I don't know. More stuff that's like happened to me or like I'm part of the mm-hmm. story. Like I, um, I've been starting to do stuff. Like I was working through a temp agency for a while. So I had a couple jokes about hmm. like some of that real stuff. So I, I, I'm trying to get, yeah, more towards that. I, I feel like, but, mm-hmm. um, also it's just like whatever, like, like I'm early enough where it's like, Oh, if it works, I just got to do it. And, uh, you know, it's not like I have all this time. I was watching Ra- Raul uh, featured yeah. that week. Yeah. And oh my God, he would, I remember there was between two shows, like he just, for one show, he just did a different closer. And that like, I was like, mind was like, how much material, material do you have? <laughs> like he, yeah, he's the funny. I, Wednesday and Thursday of that week hosting, it was my first time. And I was like, Ooh, dude, I don't know. Hopefully they bring me back sometime. But, uh, then <laughs> I also, I was just watching Raul. I was like, Oh, I should just do. <laughs> Like just watching him, it felt like a class in comedy. I was like, he's yeah. so funny, and uh, I definitely. I there was a couple of things that week. I was like, oh, I should do this kind of like Raul does, and then by Friday, it definitely seemed to be going a little better. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's he's hilarious. He's a funny yeah. guy, yeah. very funny. So you're finding that as you're you're getting immersed in the Austin comedy scene that you're you're learning things from from the folks that you're seeing. Yeah, there's different. There's like. A couple times where I've seen something where it's felt like a revelation. I was like, oh my, why didn't I do this before? Yeah. Like that, like that week there, especially I was watching, uh, Raul because Cap, if there's not a ton of people, you know, even if they're like laughing at your jokes, it'll get like quiet between. Mm-hmm. And then I was like waiting too long. I realized earlier in the week and I realized like, uh, you know, if you're at like Cold Town Theater, which is this tight, like wonderful comedy room, you can like really sit and laugh because they're like right on, it's so claustrophobic, but mm-hmm. I, 
at Cap, I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta go. I can't worry yeah. about stepping on lines because then it gets, especially as a host, you gotta like, I don't know, keep the energy up kind of. Right. So yeah, watching him, I was like, oh, duh. Like, well, yeah, I should just, this is perfect what he's doing. I, I gotta do that too. Mm-hmm. Not, and not like a, not like I started telling his jokes, you know, but right, like, but course. like an essence yeah. of like, a, you, you pick the little things that, oh, I think this could work for you, for me. Yeah. I think is, is probably where you, how you learn. Is, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I could see myself doing that. I could see how that works or that doesn't work. Yeah. Some of like the skills or like tools kind of mm-hmm. that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, well, <laughs> you might be answering, have already answered this question, but what would you say has been the coolest show that you've done in the last year? Cool show. Uh, well, there's a couple of really fun. I did a uh, stone, stone versus drunk versus sober in, uh, uh, July is coming up that show oh uh, that's a fun show yeah. yeah it was such a and like I I was the funny I was on the sober team so but it's such a like it was totally packed and it's such like a fun atmosphere because people are you know either really high or really drunk yeah and so but then when you're sober it's basically like you're just doing a regular set but it's like this super juiced up atmosphere because mm-hmm. everyone's so I don't know up for it because it's it's it was the fun it was one of the most fun sets I had I'm um, sure thing obviously wasn't I mean it was insane i took a picture like people were like standing like three deep on the stairs at java yeah like last week or or whatever when i did that um so that was fun too I and mean, they put on a great show mm-hmm. um yeah those are definitely two of the best any i mean and then any like live at cold town is is fun because it's just like a perfect room like it's like 50 people in a space that maybe 25 should be in so it's it's like perfect for comedy yeah you know? yeah are you st- Sounds like you're starting to do more of the formal shows, if you will. Are you still doing a lot of open mic stuff? Yeah, yeah, I still go out. Now that I started this job, so it might affect a little bit. But you know, for a while, I was trying to do like like ten sets a week, and mm-hmm. so you know, yeah, if you're not on shows, then fill it in with like all the mics. But the mics are good. Um, uh, yeah, just keep because I like to I like to keep like throwing out new stuff and trying to get uh, newer and newer jokes especially you know if you go around it's always your friends at the mic so it's kind of you get yeah. you feel bad like throwing the same stuff up at them over and over so I try to write a lot of stuff and then try it out um, yeah so definitely definitely try to hit a lot of the mics still mm-hmm. I don't quite hit as many maybe as some people but yeah, yeah. trying to do a lot of those so do you have a current show that you're you're regularly on or that you're uh, I host uh, I host a Sunday mic at Mr. Tramp's um, oh, okay. Which is, it's a, uh, anything could happen. It's a weird, yeah. <laughs> it's a weird <laughs> venue. It's a fun place. It's almost more of like a, like a comics hangout spot. Mm-hmm. And then like, if there happens to be a crowd for the mic, it's like, uh, like a cherry on top. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we've been doing a lottery. It was actually, we had like a month where it was like insanely good for some reason. We had regulars. I'd always uh-huh. give them beer off my host tab. And yeah, it was like really, we had a hot month for mm-hmm. sure. It was like, it was a sneaky good mic. And then, uh, but it's, it's kind of, it's kind of back to reality lately, but we're trying to, it'll, yeah. it, it's, it should be good. It should be fun. It's a fun venue. There's, whenever there's a group of friends that goes to a show at Cap City, it seems like we end up at Mr. Tramps and it's, it's got a it's good a fun vibe. Place. Yeah. 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 It's a really fun place. Um, and that room, it's like, there's been times, yeah, where we've had that room packed and it's we're like, what's going on? But it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But the room is is kind of big enough that where if there's not people in it, it feels like you're performing in a cave. Yeah, and it uh, it can get sad quick at Mr. Oh. Tramps, <laughs> but uh, it's still it's a good time. Uh-huh. It's fun. Yeah. Okay, cool. So Mr. Tramps, that's up north, North yeah, Sunday's Austin. Sunday's ten thirty. Sunday's ten thirty. So you you did a hosting show with Mikey Winfield, mm-hmm. which was was amazing with. Raul Sanchez as well. Who would you want to do a show with after that experience? Um, as far as like other like people here, you mean like or like headliners Anyone. coming through? I, I'm gonna guess Michael Che. Oh no. yeah, Che. yeah, that'd be man, that'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, Che's very funny. Um, yeah, I don't know because it's hard because then you gotta think, oh, who's at the level where they're coming through? Cap because some people come through. Like I went and watched Mulaney uh-huh. in the theater at Moon Tower. And it's cool seeing people it, like I think Carrie Lindo and Mac Blake open for him, and it's like holy cow! Like yeah. you know, because like uh, I mean that weird. Anyone you see on TV is still like no matter how much you try, it's still like oh they've been on TV, you know. Mm-hmm. And then then you see people it's like oh I've followed this person at a mic and they're opening for mm-hmm. John Mulaney. So yeah. yeah, anybody that you know, yeah, just, it'd, it'd be fun to open for people in any of those kind of situations, yeah. really. 
Cool. Well, now is your chance to promote anything that uh, you'd like to promote before I ask my final question. Yeah. Um, I don't, oh, uh, well, when's this come out? Uh, this might come out in t- either next week or the following. Okay. Um, well, if it were to come out before Thursday, I'm on a show Thursday, but okay. I don't. I'm on Triplane. It's like downtown. It's a uh, Kath, Barbadoro, Mac Blake, and Joe Hafke show. Okay. Uh, but outside of that, I think. Oh, I'm doing a, doing a show on the Super Bowl during the day. Oh, really? Before the Super Bowl. That, oh. At Bikinis. <laughs> uh, Brian Williams' show. So it'll be, it, it should be a good time. It'll be interesting. It'll yeah. be a good time, I think. Okay. Uh, other than that, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I'm not sure what I got. Stuff I'll be You're out. Mr. Tramps. Be, be Mr. You're Tramps. Doing come that to, yeah. Mic. Yeah. yeah. Come watch me, uh, open off a, potentially fun potentially awful time (laughs) sure it'll be great (laughs) all right well let's close uh with one a one word question again or one word answer question again describe your future fun fair enough parentheses hopefully (laughs) that cheating cheating (laughs) Uh, it's parenthetical so yeah Yeah, we'll we'll let you slide on that one Well, that is a wrap on Comedy Wham! Presents The Current with our guest, Michael Good. Tell us again where we can find you on social media. Yeah, on Twitter, uh, it's it's Michael Good, uh, good with three O's. I'm not famous enough to have the the only, the the, the two. (laughs) Is there another Michael? I mean, I... There's a couple, there's like a a jeweler, there's an astronaut, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good company. Yeah. (laughs) Jeweler, astronaut, open mic comedian. Exactly. (laughs) Listen to part one for more information about how Michael got to be the comedic genius that you hear and see today. How do you like that? Uh, Take it. Sure, I'll take it. (laughs) (laughs) You've been listening to Comedy Wham! Presents The Current, hosted by me, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. Be sure to visit ComedyWham.com and give us a follow on Twitter at ComedyWham. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny.